Hello, welcome to uh, Guest at Marriott Consulting Series. I'm here with Sanjeev Gupta and uh, we've been talking about uh, critical chain theory constraints and stuff. And therefore, obviously, we've been talking about buffers. And uh, we just before we started this video, we just uh, had a, a big laugh because we're talking about how you calculate buffers and why would that make two fairly experienced people like uh, him and me laugh so much. So, how would you calculate a buffer? I don't think you calculate buffers. You're given the buffer by the market. The client tells you when they want the project done. Your buffer is part of that timeline. <laughs> so you cannot calculate buffers. But a lot of people spend, there's a lot of discussion around this about calculating buffers and stuff. Yes, there is. Yeah. There is. And I think, uh, so it's very interesting because buffers are part of every POC solution. Yeah. Right, including supply chain, production, and projects. Yeah. In supply chain, actually you can calculate buffers mm -hmm. because you have a lot of highly repetitive data about demand consumption yeah. patterns. Yeah. Right, And the benefits in supply chain come from aggregating the buffers. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have made the mistake of transposing that idea, that thought, from supply chain to projects. Mm -hmm. So when you approach projects from the perspective that we can estimate the tasks and we can estimate different durations of the task as probabilistic estimates and aggressive estimates and somehow get advantage by aggregating the buffers, that is not true. In projects, the main benefit comes from being able to focus your resources on activities, on the longest chain of activities and getting it done in the fastest amount of time possible. And so this is one. The second is, you don't tell the market or the client how long your project will take. Most, more often than not, the market is telling you, your client is telling you how much time they need to finish the project to be finished in. So if they give you two years to finish the project, you don't have the luxury of saying this is how much buffer I need. You have to now figure out how to do the project in two years. Part of the two years is the buffer, part of that is the rest of the project. Okay, I, I completely agree. Uh, if I can say it in my own words, uh, you're regularly faced with a project where the, the duration that you have to do it or the date at which it must be finished is a, is a given thing. Uh, and the critical chain way of doing it is to ensure that, for instance, if you have that end date that is not negotiable, you aim for that uh, end date, but you design the work to be done plus the buffer to meet that date. So you have to try and work out how you will uh, uh, sequence the tasks and use the amount of resources necessary for you to be able to do that work plus the buffer and therefore reliably hit, reliably the, hit, yes. hit the end date. Very good. And, and if I may add to yeah. it, if you don't mind. Right, so the, there is a role that buffers do play in critical chain. Yeah. Right? And the role, at least from my experience, is that the buffer decouples the critical path or the critical chain from the not critical path or the not critical chains. Absolutely. And this decoupling is very important mm -hmm. because if you have identified what is going to be the constraint of the project or the critical chain that is going to determine how long the project is going to take, you cannot afford for this chain to be interrupted by delays on the non-critical path. Yeah. So when you put the project buffer in the project, what it effectively does is it starts the non-critical chain before mm -hmm. the absolute latest start date. Yeah. So it introduces a slack on the non-critical chain. That is the value of buffers, to decouple critical chain from the non-critical chain. And on listening to us, I, I, I wanted to say another thing about uh, buffers. Is It's strange because when you look at the way you explain uh, and sell critical chain initially, you're often talking about uh, aggregation of buffers. And you say, okay, you have a focused time and therefore you can take out the, the local buffers and put them at the end. And, and uh, you explain that by saying that there's an, uh, um, a variability in the duration of a task because sometimes the task is difficult and sometimes the task takes longer than you thought yeah, yeah. and that's the variability, okay? Yeah. And everybody goes, yes, 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 that's why projects are difficult, isn't yeah. it? Because it's hard to know exactly if this work is going to take 100 hours or 120. And in the real world, it's all wrong, that, because as you well know, once you've done critical chain, you plan for the critical chain, you execute in critical chain, 
And normally you're meant to do your buffer management in critical chain and look at how and why you consumed your buffer. Yeah. And you do a Pareto chart that says, you know, okay, uh, I used it, I consumed my buffer for various reasons. Logically, given what we're saying, the first most important consumption of the buffer should be the variability of the times uh, that we uh, identified, okay? But as you and I know, it is it's, not it's never it's never in the first five yes. of the Pareto. Uh, I've had it right off the chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the problem was we tried to work without a full kit. Uh, we didn't get all the information we needed from our clients. Yeah. Uh, we we multitask like madmen. Thank you. Uh, I could not have made the point more elegantly. And so, you know, I could not have made the point more elegantly. Uh, yes. the, the buffer we think is there because yeah. the projects are so hard to, to detail yes, uh, yes, the times yes. and stuff. But there's so much other thing yes. that's going on, much worse, that the buffer is not there to, to consume variability and in execution you know what? times. The other reason I don't like this idea of taking tasks, taking some time out of that, yeah. throwing some of it away, yeah. is because it's very difficult to really implement critical chain and get buying into the critical chain from the people who will be using it. So at a CEO level or at a top management level, it might be very attractive that your people are hiding some buffer somewhere and we will take it out and make your project shorter. But for the people who are doing the work, it has a detrimental effect on them. If you, Even if you suggest to them that they are hiding some safeties away somewhere for their own protection, right? so it's, it's not conducive to buy-in. Plus, if you do projects repeatedly, so this is, we have a, an example from a very large software company in Israel that we did. So the first two projects with this team, we were able to adopt this approach of give us your times, and whatever time they gave us, we took half of that into the buffer, and half of that we threw away, yeah. right? Then the third project, guess what they started doing? They started giving us longer times. So because they knew that whatever time they gave us, we will reduce it. So they start inflating the times. And so this approach of give me your estimates, I will take some of it and put it into the buffer. Some of it I will throw away. That doesn't work. Okay, we, uh, I, we have a very different uh, view on that, you and I, because uh, the, systematically, with no exceptions, we always sell through complete transparency and explanation of the critical chain principles from the board, starting with the, 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 the yeah. top of management and going down to the bottom, and we explain to them exactly what we're doing and why they should give us the, the focus times. Uh, and it, we have never had these sorts of problems. Uh, and uh, it's, it's amusing to do it because let's say they had a task that in the old pre-critical chain days, they said it took 100 hours, right? Yeah. You go through a whole four hours or eight hours of critical chain training, explaining to them why you want the focus time, and, they can, and it's going to be the average, and you can take longer, etc. Et et yeah, yeah. And they come out with maybe yeah, 50 hours, okay? You know very well that that is not yet the real focus time. The real focus time is probably more like 15 yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 then then the, the, the process you know is what? launched, yeah. and little by little, uh, the, if, the, if there's, uh, uh, it, it will improve. But as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 the main lever that will uh, chase out the padding of local task uh, variability is not the people as such. It's really the competence they have in their direct management and is their direct management going to, to understand that a person is allowed to take more time than the average focus time and, well, and not get worried about it. And, so and the so way we approach it, yeah. just to be um, to complete yeah. the picture of where we are differing, yeah. is if we ask people why tasks take long, yeah. they always tell us they are always waiting for something else. Either they are waiting for a decision from management, yeah. they are waiting for resources yeah. to come onto the project, mm. they are waiting for inputs. Yeah. So where we start the buying process is we first convince the management that you are not going to spread your resources thin. Mm -hmm. And we convince them that by focus and finish, how everything will get better. Yeah. So the top management is already coming to people and saying, we are going to create a condition where you will not be spread thin. Yeah. where you will not be pulled into multiple directions. Yeah. Then the second thing that is conveyed to them is that before the project or a phase of the project is starting, we will have all the inputs that are required for the subsequent phase. Mm -hmm. And then we ask people how much is the focus time 
they actually, if today there is 100 hours, they end up giving us 20 hours, 25 yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, in that sense, we are agreeing that what we are after is focus time. Right? And the convincing that you have to do for people from our experiences that focus is indeed possible. Okay. Well, I hope we haven't confused everybody. Uh, it's just that we've been playing around. Yeah, with we'll see how this comes out. Uh, we've been playing around with buffers for 20 yeah. years or so now, so uh, we sometimes went to a level two there. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you.